Homage to the Buddha. Homage to the Dharma. Homage to the Sangha. For the rest of the talks this week, I'm going to start off each of the Dharma talks with a thought or thoughts on meditation, a quote about meditation, one that I found that I think would be helpful for all of us. Today, Dogen writes, Shakyamuni and all the ancestors of India and China realized enlightenment or awakening to their true nature through meditation. Period. Starting with Shakyamuni Buddha, the awakened one, he is our founder of Buddhism. Before he awakened, his name was Gotama. The time before his enlightenment was a time of searching for an answer to his question. His question was, why do people suffer? His question was not to find the true nature, his true nature. It was to find why do people suffer. Even though he did not have an answer to his question, or even have any ideas about the answer, it does not mean that he did not have any less true nature than he did later on. He had exactly the same amount. Gotama was completely full of his true nature, just as he was. I bring this up for obvious reasons that we often feel that we are not full of our own true nature. To remember and remind us that Gotama started where we start, had the same answers, same concerns, the same questions, I mean. Why do people suffer was his his question. I ask, what is ours? As Gotama searched for answers to his questions from well-respected teachers of his time, he found that they could not help him. His teachers certainly tried to help him and did answer questions, but Gotama wouldn't settle for second best. He needed to find an answer to his question that actually was Uh, effective, deeply effective. So he continued his search. He was trying to find his own path, but he did not know what that meant. He was in the dark and was not making any progress. Then he remembered something he had done when he was a young child. He was sitting alone under a rose apple tree, and then entered into deep meditation. So he thought, well, I will try the meditation he had experienced as a young child. As he sat underneath the Bodhi tree, his resolve to continue meditating grew, as did his faith, that this was a path to pursue. He didn't know where it was going, He didn't know if it would would help him with this question, but he felt that it was a good thing to pursue, and that's what he did. 
He might have been so desperate that he didn't have any other choices. And he just felt like, well, why not? I'll just try this and see where it goes. Gautama was meditating and still within conditions that were surrounding him. So he continued to meditate. As his meditation became more still and steadfast, Mara's army came to test his faith. As he continued to sit still, his faith continued to continue to sitting still was reinforced. So something helped him to continue to sit still, even though the armies of Mara came to test his faith uh, with diligence. Even though he didn't realize uh, his enlightenment at that point, there was still something that was keeping him on the path to continue to meditate. His resolve continued to grow even though he was being tested and tested and tested. He continued to sit, and what happened was that his continuing to sit actually started to build a meditation practice and not to be um, drawn off into something else with Mara's armies. Finally, Gotama continued to meditate long enough and he had a breakthrough in his understanding. A realization of his own true nature, what we call today the Buddha nature. For the first time he understood, he knew, that he was completely full of his true nature, and so was the whole universe. Nothing was lacking. Everything was complete just as it was. After a while with his understanding, Shakyamuni, the awakened one, as he was now called, began to teach others what he knew to be true about himself. He then began to have disciples who wanted to know what he knew. One of those disciples was Makaka Sho. The following is the story about how the way has been passed down through recognition of Buddha nature in others as well as ourselves. It is important to real- recognize that Shakyamuni first had to find it within himself and that Makakasho was receptive to Shakyamuni showing the way through experience, not through the intellect. He began when Shakyamuni was talking to a great assembly. He held up an Udambara flower and looked around the audience. The only person in the crowd who responded to his gaze was Makakasho. Both Shakyamuni and Makakasho were sitting still in meditation, together, without boundaries, and they both recognized that that was what was going on. They continued to sit together and both smiled with a, yes, this is it. This is our true home, the way, the path of truth, boundless and undefinable, excluding nothing, embracing all. Both were sitting still, not holding on to anything, and very aware of universal reality. Both together were complete, without anything lacking. Nothing needed to be taken or added, nothing taken away, nothing missing. They were just sitting as they were, no different than they were before, and yet there was a difference. The eternal Buddha nature was complete within him when he was called Gotama and Shakyamuni. Also when he held the, held the flower and smiled at Makakasho. Did Gotama find the answer to his question, why is there suffering? Yes. After his enlightenment, he continued to meditate 
on why there is suffering. What he found was the Four Noble Truths. Suffering exists. Suffering's cause. The cessation of suffering. And living the Noble Eightfold Path that keeps suffering at a minimum. So his practice continued on after his time of, of waking up. He didn't have the answer to his question right away. He didn't even know if he should try and find uh, answers to questions that might help other people out. This was a time of trying to sort things out with a new dimension or a new perspective, a new view. He was incorporating it into his daily life. Maka Kasho was deeply grateful for Shakyamuni offering his teaching and example of his life in the following. The Bodhisattva Makaka Sho, wishing to pay homage to Shakyamuni Buddha, composed the following eulogy. Awakening one's intention and arriving at the ultimate, although two are not separate. Of these two states of mind, the former, the intention, is the more difficult to arrive at. So, when those who have not yet arrived at the ultimate first lead others to arrive, I, for that reason, bow to their first giving rise to their intention. With your first arriving, arising, you were already a teacher for humans and gods, surpassing those who merely listen and those who seek the goal only for themselves. The rising of such an intention as yours has surpassed the triple world, and therefore we call it the supreme state above all. By wholeheartedly giving ourselves to our practice of meditation, that is the intention that Makaka Sho was talking about. The decision to train must be carried out wholeheartedly, and the result not sought for and the result not sought for. The result will come of itself. The result will come of itself. Homage to all the Buddhas in all worlds. Homage to all the Bodhisattvas in all worlds. Homage to the scripture of great wisdom. (laughs) 